members of the Intec Collegiate Academy Governing Board, Dr. Lucero, members of the Intec Collegiate Academy faculty and staff, and most especially family and friends of the graduates or the candidates for graduation. Welcome to tonight's commencement exercises for the Intec Collegiate Academy class of 2021. Please rise for the procession of the graduates. Welcome parents, family and friends, faculty and staff, and most importantly, the Intec Collegiate Academy's graduating class of 2021. That's right. There is a Latin phrase that I often share with my two daughters, which is out weum and winium out vacuum which translates in English to, I will either find a way or make one. The spirit behind this phrase, that of action, initiative, and adaptability, 
encompasses the silver lining that I have seen emerge in our school community over this past year or more. With all of the challenges, obstacles, disappointments, and changes, we have also watched parents making adjustments and sacrifices to support their student. Teachers, administrators, and staff going the extra mile and creating new ways to teach and to reach students. We've seen students overcoming, adapting, and achieving. It hasn't been easy, and it hasn't always been fun. But none of you gave up. And now you're here, sitting next to each other in person at the finish line. As you continue in your academic journey and in life, I hope that your experiences, in addition to the math, the science, the English, and the history, have taught you that it is our trials that make us great. Your ability to adapt and overcome has prepared you for new challenges and even greater achievements in the future. Whatever your goals and dreams may be, may you either find a way or make one. On behalf of the Intech Executive Board, it is my pleasure to recognize all of this year's outstanding graduates. Congratulations, Class of 2021. To begin with, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the Intech Collegiate Governing Board, Principal Stanger, Intech Collegiate Faculty, Jess Lucero, fellow graduates, and most especially, family and friends of the graduates. Without your continuous support, motivation, and encouragement, throughout the past year, we wouldn't have came this far. Even with all the restrictions that we had to follow because of COVID, we are still here and able to walk the stage, surrounded by the people that we care for and care for us. This is my first time graduating, so I'm kind of nervous, so bear with me if I'm shaking. A short introduction about me. I'm an older sister of two. I'm president of the NHS, and, family or, and my family originated from Mexico, and I plan to pursue a degree in nursing. I'm a little shy and struggle with anxiety and social anxiety, but I was given this opportunity to speak, and I couldn't let it pass, not only for myself, but for my family. My family is the most valuable thing, sorry, that I have in my life, and I owe this big accomplishment to them, especially my mom, who has helped me immensely. The first graduation that I attended was actually my mom's high school graduation when I was like four months old. I was with her every graduation that she's had, her high school graduation, her bachelor's graduation, and her master's graduation. So now it's my turn to have her with me for mine. So for her and for my family, I'm standing up strong and tall and leaving my struggles aside for the moment. So we all started our freshman year knowing, been, being known as the annoying freshman class, but I wouldn't call us annoying. We were just energetic and very eager to talk about anything, literally anything. However, now I think of ourselves as successful students with big plans and bright futures ahead of us. We all started off together and we are finishing off all together. I believe that the Intech class of 2021 has played an important role in each other's life, such as sitting together at lunch, comparing answers to make sure we got the correct answers, working together on group assignments, or helping each other do math three quizzes that seemed impossible to do, or running together in PE, or in case, walking together in PE because I don't run. Sorry, Miss Ewing. Being at Intech hasn't been the easiest. There has been some challenges that have come with attending one of the best schools in Utah. I don't know about you guys, but the toughest class for me was freshman year biology. 
from that class made me think that I wasn't cut out for NTEC, which made me want to transfer, but I'm here right now saying this speech, which, which means I didn't give up, I pushed through, and I did not transfer. This experience could have been the same for some of you, but with a different class. Maybe that class with math, what, was Math 3. That was a rough class. Now that I mentioned Math 3, I would like to say a big thank you to the creators of Khan Academy, Nick, John, and Katie. Without you guys, I would have completed Math 3 with a not so good grade. So with that being said, some of the classes were not the easiest or the, the most fun for us, but I know the teachers tried their best to make it better. Ms. Davidson made the labs very exciting because you didn't know if you would be lighting something on fire one day or making ice cream the next. Mr. Stoll told us some awesome stories and experiences that left you thinking. Ms. Gonzalez made us laugh and smile every time we walked into the classroom or fear for our lives when we played trash get ball. Ms. Frainer made our hearts melt with how caring and sweet that she is. Ms. Salveson left you thinking about math all day. Sometimes you under understood what was going on, and some days it was the complete opposite. Mr. Kilpag had us do assignments that you would think were not related to English, but he would find a way to make them related. Jens, you made everything fun and funny in S-Lab, so I have no complaints. Mr. Ashcroft, I only had you for one day for engineering, but I will never forget that one day. <laughs> Mr. Larson, you taught us some pretty awesome editing skills, which I have used. Oh, Miss Ewing, sweet, funny Miss Ewing, where do I start with you? Let's just say a lot of excitement and laughter comes with being around you. <clears throat> Teddy, I've known you for a long time. I sat under your desk, out of color, waiting for my mom at work, but now I was sitting in front of you during my college classes. Miss Fleming, I never had you as a teacher, but I saw you at prom for the first time, and I could tell that you were the light of a party. Jackie, you provided us with the most important and our most favorite part of school, lunch. And for that, I think we all are very grateful for you. Miss Broadbent, Miss Lusk, Miss Anderson, and Mr. Stanger, without your guidance and support, this school wouldn't be running as good as it is today. We thank you teachers and staff for all your hard work and the care that, that you gave us all as individuals. A big thank you to our parents as well. Parents, you're probably sitting here today wondering where the years have gone as you marvel at your son's and daughter's accomplishments. It seems that long ago they were toddling off to kindergarten with their backpacks being bigger than them. But they're now seniors, class of 2021. It was such an honor to share this moment with you all and it was such a pleasure to share the intensity of emotion, emotions filling this auditorium as we graduate and close this chapter of our lives. Now on to the next chapter of our life. Thanks for everyone and have an amazing night. Good evening, parents, friends, teachers, mentors, administrators, and of course, the graduating class of 2021. First of all, I want to say to my class that, well, we did it. I'm honored to be standing in front of you to commemorate the memories and accomplishments of our great class. As Intec is known as one of the best high school in the US, I would like to give a round of applause to the class of 2021 for working hard to get this day. I still remember when I first walked through the doors of Intec nervously. At the time, 
none of us believed graduation was a day would ever come. But can you believe it? We have become in tax graduates, leaving the school behind to a whole new crop of people who might feel the same feeling we felt four years ago. It has been a long four years and a short four years. Long because all of the dramas and stressful exams and homework, short because of the lifelong, lifelong friendships and the lasting memories. Whether the four year at Intech were long or short for you, I'm sure that we will always remember this place and the teachers that always helped us. Each of us had a goal to achieve during our high school year. It can be attending your dream college, being good at math, or meeting a lot of nice friends. My goal was to get into the dream college, but actually, I couldn't reach the goal I planned since my freshman year. My favorite musician, B.B. King's quote, comforted me a lot, and I would like to share it with you. The beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. All the experience that we had during our high school are valuable. Whether you achieve your goals or not, you're already a proud Intech graduate who is armed with the wisdom that we gained through our high school life. I'm sure that this experience will be the precious shield that can protect us from all the hardship we'll face throughout our life. I asked, what was your favorite memory at Intech? When I asked my friends, teachers were always involved in their memory. Some mentioned the robotics club with Mr. Ashcroft. Some mentioned the science fair with Ms. Davidson. Some mentioned IT8 with Jens. Some mentioned m and math with Ms. Davis, uh, Ms. Gonzalez. I would like to represent the class of 2021 and say thank you to the teachers at Intech. Thank you, Mr. Stanger, for teaching us how to be a leader. Thank you, Ms. Frenner, for teaching us how to be nice to others and listening to our concerns. Thank you, Ms. Anderson, for teaching us how to listen carefully to others' words. Thank you, Ms. Broadbent, for teaching us how to not worry about failures. Thank you, Jens, for teaching us computer skills and how to be friendly to others. Thank you, Mr. Ashcroft, for teaching us in engineering and the importance of teamwork. Thank you, Mr. Blanchard, for assisting students. Thank you, Ms. Davison, for teaching us science and help us dig into our own interest in science. Thank you, Ms. Ewing, for teaching us how to be healthy and overcome our stress during our st study time and make me run. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Fl Flaming, for teaching us English and art. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez, for teaching us math and how to be friendly to others. Thank you, Mr. Kilpak, for teaching us English and the importance of music in our life. Thank you, Mr. Larson, for teaching us various computer skills and teaching us to overcome our stress through games. Thank you, Ms. Lehman, for proctoring our concurrent enrollment class. Thank you, Ms. Levis, for helping us to enjoy fresh and good lunch every day. Thank you, Ms. Salveson, for teaching us math. And personally, I love to guess your Star Wars related quiz passwords. Thank you, Mr. Stoll, for teaching us US history and how government works. Your financial literacy lecture will help us a lot through our life. Thank you, Ms. Lusk, for listening to our concerns and giving us a wise solution. He's not here, but thank you, Mr. Whippy, for teaching us English and D&D. Thank you, Dr. Hartman, for teaching us advanced English and help us to assess the information in various aspects. Finally, I would like to give a special thanks to Google, Wikipedia, and whoever invented copy and paste. <laughs> and last, very, very finally, thank you, my parents, and I love you, uncle. Thank you.
Good evening, Intech Collegiate Governing Board, Principal Stanger, Intech Collegiate Faculty, uh, Dr. Lucero, fellow graduates, and most especially family and friends of our graduates. I wanted to introduce our keynote speaker for today, uh, Dr. Jessica Lucero. Uh, Dr. Lucero is an associate professor of social work at Utah State University, where she also serves as the graduate director for their full-time MSW uh, program. Starting in July, Dr. Lucero will serve as the inaugural department chair of the Department of Social Work. Uh, she completed her doctoral studies at Wayne State University in Detroit, along with both her MSW and BSW at the University of Wyoming. She was honored as her college's Teacher of the Year in 2016, and she was honored with the Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Wyoming in 2019. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jessica Lucero. Thank you to, uh, for the beautiful musical number and also to the salutatorian and valedictorian for their wonderful remarks. It was such a pleasure to get to know your class and uh, I'm especially struck by the gratitude that I can feel here tonight from the graduates. It is a deep honor to deliver the commencement address to this incredible student body. You made it to the graduation stage today after a grueling year that turned the whole world upside down. This in and of itself is an amazing accomplishment. Principal Stanger told me that despite the challenges of COVID-19, the average GPA for your class didn't budge a bit, showing your academic grit and resilience during this challenging year. Well done. Here you are at this important milestone, an emerging adult about to embark on the path of higher education, specialized training, and eventually an exciting and meaningful career. <clears throat> In the hustle and bustle of this life stage, you might feel an urgency to declare what you will do next, what you will study, what your career will be. Since you were a young child, you've probably been asked by countless people who care about you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And when you grow up, you'll likely be asked again and again, what do you do? You all have worked very hard, many earning college credits while at Intech with specific educational and professional goals in mind. The what you want to be question is important because it provides a context for which you can make an impact in this world. Some of you will study computer science and information technology. Others will go into medical and uh, health professions, engineering, or biological sciences, just to name a few. Your curiosity, creativity, critical thinking, innovation, and fearlessness will propel you forward in those professional pathways. The what you will do is magnificent. But I'm here tonight to put a different question at the forefront of your mind as you cross that threshold from high school to what is next. Who do you want to be? Just this year, I was talking with a close friend who was in the midst of an existential crisis. He was stuck and unsure what would come next. At some point, I gently asked him, who do you want to be? His initial response listed a few things that he wanted for his future. A loving relationship, a successful career, where he wanted to live, what hobbies he hoped to invest in. I pressed, but who do you want to be? He reconsidered and said, I guess I'm going to have to think about that. That's a hard question. It is a hard question, and it's a question that demands our lifelong attention. A good place to start is by asking yourself another question. What do you value? If you value family, are your choices congruent with that value? If you value service, are your actions lining up? Asking ourselves who we want to be requires us to look inward and assess what our values are and then to look outward. 
and assess how we show up and embody those values. The who we want to be question demands our inward reflection and our outward action. And when we consider our actions, we naturally consider ourselves in relationship to others. In one of my favorite books, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, a psychiatrist and survivor of the Holocaust, described this process of finding meaning outside yourself as self-transcendence. He wrote that being human always points and is directed to something or someone other than oneself, be it a meaning to fulfill or another human being to encounter. The more one forgets oneself by giving themselves to a cause to serve or another person to love, the more human they are and the more they actualize themselves. When we're sorting out who we want to be, what we're really looking for is meaning. But Frankel's ideas suggest that the true meaning of life is to be discovered in this great, big, complicated, and beautiful world rather than within the confines of our psyches. In an individualistic culture like the one we live in, finding this sort of meaning or discovering and rediscovering who we want to be in relation to the world can be difficult when excessive focus on self dismantles our sense of responsibility for one another. A sense of responsibility for others is something I have had the great honor of witnessing in our community through my work with the Cash Refugee and Immigrant Connection, or CRIC. Let me relate a recent example that may be familiar to some of you. Almost one year ago, the Bear River Health Department announced 198 new coronavirus cases in what had otherwise been our low-risk community. The next day, another couple hundred cases were reported. The majority of new cases were traced to a production and processing plant whose employees were disproportionately from immigrant and refugee communities. The virus spread quickly in this environment, and over that weekend, Logan, Utah became a national hotspot for COVID-19. While formal helping systems were getting structures and procedures in place to adequately respond to the magnitude of the outbreak, community organizers, driven by their deep sense of responsibility for others, spring into action. Within five days of the outbreak, grassroots organizers from churches, nonprofits, and the community had developed collaborative systems, not, uh, recruited volunteers, set up donation sites, and delivered culturally appropriate food and critical health items to almost 200 households. Within two weeks, nearly 400 households, 60 of which were refugee communities, had received the items they needed to stay safely quarantined at home. My home was a donation site during this time, and it was beautiful to see strangers quietly deliver thermometers, hand sanitizer, fever-reducing medicines, all of which were nearly impossible to find in the stores at that time. I will never forget the community care that I witnessed last summer. Let me tell you more about what I mean by community care. Community care is the idea that we use our power, privilege, and resources to nurture healthy, vibrant, equitable, and joyful communities. Community care isn't just an idea. It's something we do. It's, it's how we show up. Showing up for our community requires us to think about power. Who has it, who doesn't, and why? Showing up for our community means advocating for people who have the least amount of power and the highest stake in the issue. Showing up takes conviction. It also requires endurance. Sometimes the seeds we plant won't bloom for years, and sometimes they're washed away altogether. We can care and show up for our community in times of crisis, like the one I described, but communities are transformed when that care extends beyond the crisis, when we show up daily in the struggle. When we sit with the pain and suffering of others and ask, how can we help? This type of commitment to community care is something that has to be cultivated something that requires you to look inward and consider who do I want to be. Of course, knowing who we want to be 
is not the same thing as actually being that person. Some days we get it right, and some days we get it very wrong. Our family recently took our camp trailer out for the first time. We're newbies at this sort of thing, and it seemed like most things that could go wrong did. For example, when we pulled up to the RV dumping station, my YouTube video tutorials utterly failed me, and I mixed up the order of operations, releasing the valve before attaching the hose. For those of you who have watched fewer RV care tutorials than me, this means that the wastewater, a polite way of putting it, spilled onto my bare hands. I scrambled to rectify the situation as my partner, Steve, nearly lost it in a fit of giggles. As I washed my hands like I was scrubbing in for surgery, I laughed too. Uh, we'd get better at this, and I probably would never pull the valve again first. I'd make Steve do it. Being human is hard and often messy, and self-compassion is a necessity. The point is, every single day, we are presented with a new opportunity to be who we want to be. Every day that our values lead to action and our complicated, beautiful humanness is directed to someone or something outside ourselves, we're on the right track. But how exactly do we decide where we direct our efforts? After all, aren't there infinite challenges that demand a human response? After a long board meeting at Crick a few years ago, my dear late friend and colleague Krista Sorensen shared something that struck me to my core. For those of you who might have known Krista, you know that she was extraordinarily committed to serving her community. I asked her that evening how she had enough time and capacity to show up for her community in all the ways she did, and she responded simply, it's easy. I have enough time because I only commit myself to causes I'm passionate about. It doesn't feel like work when it makes my heart beat bigger. Now, whenever I think about how I can keep showing up for my community, I always think of what makes my heart beat bigger, and I hope that you will too. So thinking of your life ahead, what you will do will make a difference, especially when you know who you are. Knowing who you are means knowing what you value. When your values align with your actions and your actions extend beyond yourself in responsibility to others, you'll find meaning in relationship to your community and the world. My sincerest hope for you all is to find this sort of meaning in life. My wholehearted congratulations to you, class of 2021. Thank you. Intech Collegiate Academy Class of 2021. Please rise. Members of the Intech Collegiate Academy Governing Board, standing before you are candidates for graduation who have met all the requirements for high school graduation set forth by Intech Collegiate Academy and the Utah State Board of Education. It is therefore my pleasure, upon the recommendation of my colleagues, the faculty of Intech Collegiate Academy, to recommend that these students be awarded a high school diploma from Intech Collegiate Academy. Principal Stanger, on behalf of my associates on the Intech Collegiate Academy Governing Board and the power vested in the board by the state of Utah, I accept these candidates who have completed the requirements for graduation and will bestow upon them a high school diploma with all the rights, duties, and privileges pertaining thereto. 
All right. Now, normally, we have a practice for graduation due to COVID. We have foregone that, that tradition. So uh, just a couple of instructions. Uh, Mr. Allen, you're going to lead the graduates into uh, around the back and, and uh, come up this ramp over here. For parents, uh, your graduate will be called by name and right around these microphones over here, that's where they'll receive their diploma. A board member will hand you di your diploma so that we don't have the awkwardness of trying to figure out who wants to shake hands or who wants to fist bump or who wants to be left alone. We're just not going to do that. We're just going to hand you a diploma and each board member uh, and uh, Dr. Lucero will just congratulate you without shaking hands. Is that all right? Can we do that? Uh, but we will hand you your diploma on one end. Parents, if you want to take a photo, you can come down the aisle right there and uh, we want you graduates to turn for that photo op, right? Because your mom or your dad wants that photo. Whether you are wearing a mask or not is up to you. So you can remove those now if you would like and leave them at your seats. Um, then uh, parents, graduates will come across the stage. We'll congratulate them somewhere right here. Uh, the graduate will stop and move their tassel from the right to the left if you want a photo or video of that. So, Mr. Allen, lead them on. And board members will come up here. Tyler Allen. <laughs> Madeline Barbieri. Alondra, Alondra Barande. Gabriella Bernal. Jamie Byrne. Owen Clark. Camry Davis. Ian Ferguson. Morgan George.
Frankie Hinkle. Isaac Humphreys. Mark Lotvakoski. Sung Joon Lee. Millicent Lindbergh. Parker McDonald. Anya Majumdar. Ali Martin. Jake Miller. Samuel Pearson. Wiley Rollins. Mysteria Ricks. Nicholas Seafelt. Jeffrey Shelley. Luke Tidwell. Judson Tolman.
Shay Townsend. Landon Vincent. John Wing. Ian Welch. Spencer Whiting. There are places I remember all my life Though some have changed, some forever, not for better Some have gone and some remain All these places have their moments With lovers and friends I still can recall some are dead and some are living in my life I've loved them all but of all these friends and lovers there is no one compares with you and these memories lose their meaning when I think of love is something new Though I know I'll never lose affection For people and things that went before I know I'll often stop and think about them In my life I love them more affection for people and things that went before I know I'll often stop and think about them in my life I love them more I love Intact's small community. When I first came to the United States, I needed a lot of help from teachers. Starting from English, I used to ask questions often after the school ends. Whenever I visited their office, teachers always answered my questions kindly. I believe the nice teachers and the environment that we can ask questions easily is the biggest strength of Intact and the reason why I love Intact. 
think my favorite part of being at Intec has probably just been the awesome community that there is here because I know that in other schools I wouldn't be able to get as much personal help from my teachers since it's a smaller school so I feel like I can get more help, um, help with the tough assignments. We're all interested in the same kind of topics like we're all here for STEM careers so I feel like you know these are my people I fit in so I really like being at Intec because it just feels like the right crowd and I'm able to get the help that I need. What I've liked most about coming here is uh, the many opportunities that Intech has. I've made use of several of these, including early college and uh, doing athletics with Green Canyon, where I did cross country and was able to go to state a couple of times. Um, how small the school is, and that most of my friends came from middle school here. Um, I've liked coming to Intech. Um, it has a small environment, and um, you're, I've been able to. Um, get to know the teachers really well and, and get to know the students really well and it's been uh, a, way, a way different experience, high school experience that way. Um, I've loved being able to uh, have a bunch of college classes that I've been able to do and, and kind of get ahead of the game. Um, I, I've, I've enjoyed in tech, um, I've enjoyed in tech a lot. It's been, it's, it's really just a great environment. I think that's my uh, favorite thing about coming to in tech. I enjoy the small school and the friendly environment. Probably the opportunities that they've given the friends that I've made. Uh, probably the environment and how small it is. I really don't like big crowds and the IT and STEM programs are really awesome. So I like that. I think one of my favorite things about Intech is just the community and um, also being able to take classes that I'm interested in and there's a lot of things that appeal to me at Intech. I've liked how caring and understanding all of the teachers are. You can feel like really comfortable if you need help with something. They're really easy to talk to and like I feel like they really care for you. Um, like, how do I say it? On a more like one-to-one -one basis, like they care about each individual as their own. I would say that um... I like uh, all the pe all the pe all the friends that I've made. Um, it has been the thing I like the most about this school. The teachers are also really good, but I've met some of my best friends at this school, and I don't think I'll uh, I'll ever um, be separated from them. I really enjoyed the smaller class sizes than other schools. Um, being able to know everyone in the school and know who's around and know what's going on in the school and what is coming up and everyone's just kind of everyone's friend here. It's pretty great. When Sebastian wore a dress to prom. I would say one of my favorite memories is Probably when people used to play the piano a lot because I enjoyed that. There's a lot of good players here. So, yeah. There was this one time in junior year where I thought I had a virus on my computer and I was freaking out and Sierra and had an asthma attack because she was laughing so hard. I think I remember my computer programming class my sophomore year. Um, there with a bunch of other friends, we'd goof off during class, have a good time. We had a little bit too much work time, and so we would often just get very distracted and program random stuff in wingdings or add funny colors and all sorts of stuff. And it, it was a good time, a lot of fun. Maybe when Aiden sat in a chair and broke it or when one of my shadows jumped in the canal. There are so many favorite memories at Intech, but if I have to choose one, I'll choose Vax Robotics. From my freshman year to sophomore year, I was on the robotics team and stayed after school with my friends. Robotics was hard, but all the efforts and results that made with my team made me love robots. Um, probably in engineering when we built that um, t-shirt cannon tank, I participated in that and it was just a lot of fun seeing it work and shoot t-shirt. Video was a blast. I remember uh, Mr. Whitby.
be uh, when he used to be the English teacher for this school. I remember uh, him being one of my favorite teachers when he was here. I wish uh, I could just go back and be a better student just for him, because I really like the way he did things. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of good memories. Uh, some things that come to mind first off is uh, doing robotics. Uh, I did I did robotics for three years and it was absolutely awesome. Uh, sophomore year robotics was probably my favorite when I was on drive team and uh, we were able to go down to Salt Lake and, and perform pretty well. I think one of my favorite in tech memories would probably be freshman year when our friend group would sit in the back hallway. We would always come up with cool story ideas and just sit there and make each other laugh. Like it wasn't extremely like well known throughout the entire school, but it meant a whole lot to me to just have that time where every day I'd get to go sit at lunch and just laugh my heart out with my friends. My favorite in tech memory is working with first robotics and just the opportunities I get to learn and improve my skill set. Um, this one might sound a little funny, but I was teeing for Freener and a parent called to talk to Mr. Chantvine. Is that how you pronounce Jen's last name? Okay, yeah, and I didn't know who that was. And so I was like, I don't think they work here because I just knew them as Jen's. So then I was like, I don't think they work here. And then the, the parent was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm positive. And then I just, I just hung up. And I think that's the most, um, when I most remember the most. Or when Nick, and Miss Gonzalez would go at it in math. That was always my favorite. Five years from now, I hope to be working on a computer science degree at USU. Uh, probably studying nursing. Five years from now, I think I will probably either be working full time, going to college, or going on an adventure somewhere, hopefully. Probably working, <laughs> at hopefully an IT job, or just a job in general. In five years from now, I think I'll be, uh, I will be a certified welder, and I would like to go into some uh, IT stuff, like with yeah, just uh, IT stuff and probably some computer science stuff on the side. I think that might be pretty fun. In five years, I, I, I hope to be working in computer programming or computer engineering degrees. Um, I don't know too much about what I want to be doing from in five years. It's a lot of open space. I will probably be working on my bachelor's degree in geology. Hopefully, uh, computer programming for some company. Hopefully, five years from now, I will be either pursuing a master's degree in um, one of the science fields or moving on from college and going into um, the animal caretaking um, field. So, marine biology, zoology, any of those fields. Something working with nature. Um, hopefully I'll be a travel nurse and specifically a labor and delivery nurse or a NICU nurse. After graduating college, I'm going to attend medical school preparing orth orthophysics surgeon. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our commencement exercises for this evening. And prior to the recessional march, we just want to give you a, a bit of instruction as well. The seniors, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Tolman, will uh, just exit this aisle and head out. And as long as it's decent weather, we've asked them to just keep heading right on out the door. That way you can greet them with or without a mask according to your desires as they they go outside. I'm, a, I'm assuming it's good weather out there, but I haven't uh, walked out there. Class of 2021, please rise.
We've appreciated your, your comments and participation tonight, and uh, we, have, we, of course, are all here to honor you. Um, but I would like uh, one more time for you to be able to honor those who have come to honor you. Um, we've conveniently, due to COVID, seated them all together. So why don't you turn and find them and give them a round of applause for supporting you. Thank you. Now, class of uh, 2021, on behalf of the staff, faculty, administration, and board of Intech Collegiate Academy, we're proud of you. Congratulations and good luck.